Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this last month, I have had quite a few new subscribers to the channel. So I thought just before I even start this video, just introduce myself for those of you who do not know me and who are new here. So my name is Aisha. I have a channel called The Craftopreneur and on here we talk about sewing. That's pretty, that's pretty much what we talk about. Talk about sewing, I like to talk about fabric. I have a little bit of a fabric, I wouldn't call it an addiction, but like, I don't know. You guys, you guys tell me what you think. And um, I like to show you guys what I'm making, do the odd tutorial, and essentially just talk all things sewing. And that's pretty much it. So if you guys are into sewing and making things, seeing how other people are interpreting other patterns, because I have quite a few patterns and I'm trying to kind of work my way through them and show you guys what I think, how they look and um, why I think you should buy this pattern or like if I think you shouldn't. But that is basically my channel and that is me. And that is enough of the awkward introduction. So for all of you who have just subscribed, welcome. And for all of you who are already subscribed, how you doing? Let's get to the video. So for today's video, I'm actually not gonna talk about stuff that I made. That video will come soon. Today, we're gonna to actually talk about my favorite sewing books and all the books that have really helped me like throughout my years to get to kind of the level that I'm at right now. Now, I will just say, I don't think I'm at like this super high level. I know a lot of you think that my sewing is really good, but I make so many mistakes, guys. What you're not seeing is the mistakes, the tantrums, the like the amount of projects that I have to like walk away from because they're just vexing me. Like that happens. So don't think that you're not a good sewer. Like it's a learning process and it is a learning process throughout your whole career of sewing. So, you know, don't, don't worry about things not looking great. I always go with, if it looks good on the outside, don't worry so much about what's going on on the inside. And then as you learn more, you will learn how to make those insides as pretty as your outsides. So like, you know, just have fun with it anyway. On to the books. These books have helped me with a lot. I reference them all the time. Some of them more than others and some of them I plan to reference more, but let's get into it. So I've kind of broken them up into five categories. So books showing you like sewing techniques, like those kind of books. So books on pattern cutting that I've been using to help me create my own patterns. We've got books on fitting, how to fit those patterns and fitting things for yourself. Um, I've got fabric books. And then also I've got a book about like using my overlocker because that is just the whole different beast that I have not mastered yet. So yeah, we've got some books that I am using and working through. So let's start with the sewing books. Now I was actually looking through my collection of books and I realized that even though I have a lot of books, I thought they were all like sewing related, but a lot of them are actually like for fashion design, fashion drawing, like fashion business stuff. And I think that was at a time when I, when I was so convinced that I was gonna start my own label, which I don't know, maybe that could happen, but like it's not really a thing that I'm too interested in at the moment. So I have a lot of those books. So I actually have quite a small number of sewing books, but that is because the sewing books that I do have, have so much information in them that I just don't feel that I need to buy another book so I have three here that we're going to talk about and these books I have gone to over and over again I was in one of them yesterday because I was just like how do you do that again so I'll start with the big one first book that I am going to talk about is this dressmaking a complete step-by-step -step guide by Alison Smith now I bought this book a long long time ago this is one of the first books that i bought as a sewist um i don't even know if it has like the publication date and the thing is this book looks like new but i have used this book so many times this is a great book and basically this book kind of gives you the step by step of everything you'll need from beginning to end in making any kind of garment. You won't be able to see because it's kind of too light, but at the back they have patterns. Now the patterns there you can download online and print off at home or you can photocopy and it shows you how to like do it either way or you can just trace them by hand if that's what you want to do. So this is a really good foundation book to start with because obviously no one book is going to cover absolutely everything. You will start with one big book like this if you're a beginner and then you will start doing your own self-learning and it will go on from there depending on how enthusiastic you are about it. But just on the table of contents here, they have quite a few different like categories, which I thought was good for me. So they have a whole bit on 
tools and materials. They've got a bit on fabrics. They've got a bit about patterns and how to cut them out and how to do everything. So this book has patterns that you can print out for six different skirts, five dresses, five trousers, and eight tops and four jackets. If you just worked through this book, just doing the instructions and practicing everything, you can pretty much make yourself an entire wardrobe just from using this book. There is also a bit about um, customizing, as in like adding like embellishments and stuff like that, and another bit for mending and altering your stuff. And there's also like a fitting guide. So this is really, really, really good book. And honestly, I still use this like like I still use this most days to be honest. So in the book there are some really clear photographs and illustrations showing you how to do each technique and also there's extra materials online because they have a website that you can go onto and read up more. It is hefty and like it's a bit pricey for a book. It cost me £25. I imagine it's probably cheaper now because I bought this maybe 10 years ago so you know I'll put links for every book that I have in the description bar below if you guys want to go on to like my Amazon shop and like buy it, go go ahead. I will put all of the details there and you can have a look for yourself. Now the next one is actually by the same author and it's basically the same book, but it's just the sewing techniques. So if you don't wanna go through all the pattern making and all of like the alterations, this book here, which is so step-by-step, step, it has just all the sewing techniques that you could need for any project. So it says here, more than 200 essential techniques for beginners. And this is also by Alison Smith. So this is a really, really good book. You can get the really big one, which has patterns and everything. But if you just want the information and the pictures, then you can get this like streamlined version. And this costs like 12, it says at the back 12.99. So for half the price, you can just get like the actual information you need. But if you want like an actual thing to work through complete with patterns and like other information then you can get the bigger book but this one is probably the one that I reference the most because sometimes I just want to know how to do a Hong Kong finish or I want to know how to hem or the correct way to put on a buttonhole or how do you put on snap buttons or you know which way should you put velcro in and why are bra straps like this like it's all in here it's really really good and there's a whole bit on hand stitching in here my hand stitching is terrible but it's something that I'm getting better at and in here it shows you really really good ways um, to use hand stitching for decorative stuff or in place of using a machine so you know on those days where my machine is giving me a little bit of trouble and I'm just like I need to finish the seam this will help you so I would highly recommend either this if you just want the information or the dressmaking book if you want like a whole basically course of things that you can just work through highly recommend both those books links down below so the last book about sewing techniques and stuff like that is this book which is this one which is couture sewing techniques by Claire B Schaefer yeah, it is B. Schaefer by Claire B. Schaefer. Now this book, I think quite a few sewists might have this one. Uh, this is the one that I picked up when I was in um, fashion school uh, because I really wanted my clothes to start looking expensive, basically. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I wanted the same finish that you see in those clothes that you spend stupid money for because like why else would you spend stupid money for it's because of these couture techniques it's because of the hand stitching and the hand beading and the way that be they've been put together there's a reason why some designer items cost that much because they've been made by hand and using these really laborious and also beautiful techniques to finish your clothing that lasts for so long and it's the quality that you're looking for. Not a lot of designers do this, may I just say. I will just say that. But there are a handful that the stuff that they're bringing out is very high quality. This is probably why I don't buy a lot of designer, um, but I know how to make it look like designer. So in here we'll be looking at lots of different techniques and they will be using um, like real world um, examples um, and designers to show you kind of what they're using. And yeah, this is a very informative book. There is a whole bit here on hand stitching because a lot of couture made to measure bespoke garments are hand stitched together because, well, depending on the fabric, depending on the shape they're working with, some of that stuff cannot be done with a machine. <laughs> Can't be done with a machine. So in this book, they have an history of couture. They've got all of the different um, hand 
stitches, they talk about making twirls, all of the things that you will need to be able to produce a beautifully made couture garment. And then it goes on to all the different techniques. It talks about the different types of garments. You've got the skirts and pants. And then on top of that, the different ways that you can finish them, things that might be only specific for that garment and how to do it in a couture way. So there are definitely a lot of things in here. So I use this, I've been using this more and more recently because I'm trying to get my clothes to have a really professional and like couture finish, like all of them. I didn't use this as much as I really should have before but now that I feel more confident in my skills I feel like I can tackle a few of the things in here so I am working through this especially when I go and work with um, like difficult fabrics when you're working with silks beaded fabrics sequins laces this is a great book to show you how to finish those garments because those are the sort of garments that you'll have to use hand stitching that you'll have to use those couture techniques to make sure that the finish is beautiful but it also lasts and it will like last in your wardrobe you don't want to make something that's going to fall apart in 15 minutes you want it to last for years for for a really long time so this is really really going to help so i would definitely suggest like if you're looking to like level up in your sewing then go for a book like this because some of the stuff in like there's definitely stuff in here that is not in the other books because this is like elevated sewing so i would definitely recommend just those three books alone have helped me just you know grow my skill when it comes to sewing uh better my hand stitching which still isn't great and just generally understand like so you know what you're looking at as well it helps you look for quality too next category of books that I have which is pattern cutting something that I have been doing more and more over the years and uh, yeah I really enjoy pattern cutting and these books made things a lot more easier to process so this book is probably my most used book I use this all the time but that's also because I'm trying to create and design my own patterns now that's like a new focus for me so this book and a lot of these other books that I have here are currently the books that I'm reading the most at the time. This is really, really good because it gives you very um, straightforward instructions of how to create lots of different shapes. Give you all the different body measurements, the standard body measurements that uh, that are the industry standards that everybody uses to create the garments that are actually out in the world today. So if you wanted to go by the industry standards from like a size zero from all the way up to, some of these are up to a size 26, then you can start with these ones and then kind of base your patterns off that. They also give you all the different instructions of how to create a bodice block, skirt block, trouser block, dress block, sleeve block, basically any kind of block and then it goes on to go all the different variations of collars sleeves you know tucks pleats whatever you want in your garments it shows you how to modify the block and put those things in so for instance if i wanted to make a shift dress with two pleats in the skirt and a princess seam in the bodice but an open back in my personal size I can create a block using my personal measurements like they give you all the things that you need to measure and how to measure them they also give you the ease that you can add into it then once I've created the block using my personal measurements I can then go to each specific area so I can go to the pleats section the pleats in skirts it will give you the instructions how to add pleats into a skirt block and the ease that you need and base it on your measurements and the same with having an open back the same with having princess seams and adjusting for your bust so this is a really really good book it's taken me some years to um kind of like get my head around it but with pattern cutting it is very technical there's a lot of um not maths like if you have a calculator you'll be fine but there's a lot of measuring involved and being very precise with those measurements so it can be a little bit overwhelming. It's a great book to keep going back to, but it's not a book that you should use just alone. If you're gonna learn pattern cutting, you're going to need a lot of other resources, but this one was probably the thing that I used the most. I would definitely recommend to everyone, and I think they bring out a new edition every year. I've got the fifth edition, but I think they're on like the seventh or eighth edition. So you can get the um, newest edition, and I will put that in the link below. So another pattern cutting book that I bought around the same time I bought that one was this one, which is called pattern cutting um, and it's one of the portfolio skills so this was um 
this book was recommended when I went to London College of Fashion. They recommended buying this book. And then the course that I did was actually with the author, which is Denik Chaman Lo. He really knows his stuff, guys. Uh, I got so much information from him when I did that course. So in here, again, it will show you all the different measurements you need to take, how to create your own blocks, how to fit to your body, how to fit to another person's body using a mannequin and a teeny bit on draping in here. This one is also a really good one to pair with both of them because whatever you don't understand in one book, you probably find a better explanation in the other. So uh, again, I really, really like this. So while this one doesn't give as much information as on how to modify your block to like a whole entire range of like styles, this one does exercises based on um, designers that have already made clothes. So there's like a balloon dress in there and there's like a, there's lots of other things and they'll show you from a block how you can get that. So this is also pretty good if you want to kind of challenge yourself uh, different ways of drafting up a pattern and seeing what they look like. So my most recent book purchase and also my most favorite, I'm so excited about this book, I can't tell you, is so big as well. This book here, which is called Pattern Making for Fashion Design and it's by Helen Joseph Armstrong and this is the fifth edition. Now this book, this is like a university book. I didn't go to university for fashion. I just did like a college course and I've done a few short courses as well. But this one is the one that they ask you to get when you're in university, if you're gonna do pattern cutting, because the information in this will last you your whole entire life. And I, this only just came on my radar maybe about two months ago. This book cost 50 pounds, 50 pounds, but totally worth it. I like just looking in it, I'm already obsessed about it. So like the metric guide for women's wear, this also has every sleeve variation, but a lot more fashion forward things. So a lot more things than your standard, you know, sleeve or whatever. So there are a lot more different styles in here, like a lot more than you can get in the other book. Things that you might not have even like thought about or like how do they do that? Like there's a lot of that in there and it will show you how to modify your block pattern to get that. So this one is probably the one I'll use the most because there's a lot of styles that are out now that are really beautiful but I just have no idea how to put that in a pattern to like incorporate maybe that sleeve or like something and this has this has everything so um, it also has menswear it talks about dance wear and uh, dance wear sports wear and like stretch fabrics swimwear underwear capes hoods hats accessories and kids wear there is a lot in here and this book I'm I'm so excited can you tell can you tell i've already like used it for like two two different projects that i'm just like oh yes this book is great but it's not for beginners if you're a beginner and you're getting to this you're going to look at it and it's going to basically be another language to you and like i would say i'm an intermediate sewer and half of this is in another language but as i'm working through it along with doing the like exercises and trying to create things that i see out in out in the world more and more of this is making sense to me so yeah, definitely not for beginners, but if you're looking for a challenge, if you're looking for a challenge, get yourself this book. Um, it's expensive, but I think it's worth it. And it's the sort of book that I know that I'm gonna have this until I'm like 80 years old. I don't think I would ever not need this book. So if you know that you're a sewer for life and uh, this is like an investment, this is an investment. And also this would really work well if pattern cutting is like a career option for you. I think you'll be able to um, really have some good stuff in here if like you're trying to work for other companies this will really help you get the shapes that you're looking for so yes as you can tell wildly excited about this and uh, yeah i've already cracked the spine on this and i pro this will probably be the most used book that i ever use because i'm already in love with it so the final pattern cutting book is actually a book about draping this one i picked up a couple of years into my sewing i wanted to learn about draping and then i got the book and then i was like absolutely terrified of it uh, because draping again is like i don't think it's a hard thing to do but it's also, it takes a certain amount of like knowing how things work. And when I got this, I, I still didn't really know how things work, like shaping, how to like manipulate fabric. But I feel like I know a little bit more now. So I've started using this more and more. And this does actually have an entire course. And if you've got like a DVD player or a computer that takes CDs, this also comes with um, 
like a DVD so you can actually watch things and like watch it happen. But this book has a lot of really, really beautiful pictures showing you how to drape on the stand or drape straight onto a person's body. And then it gives you a lot of different um, exercises to do. It is an actual course. So if you wanted to learn something from beginning to end, then this book is probably the book that you would go for. This book, again, I wouldn't say it's for beginners, but it could be for beginners because it is a complete guide. It tells you all things you're gonna need. If you're really good at following instruction, go for the book. But if you want to like maybe kind of get your head around the basics of pattern cutting first and then head into draping, that's absolutely fine too. Don't actually remember how much this one was, um, but I will put all the details down below. And that's all my pattern cutting books. So yeah, let's get on to the next one, which are the fitting books. Very close to pattern cutting and sewing, once you've known how to sew and you've made your own pattern, you need to make sure it fits you properly. And given that our bodies are all so different from each other, what works for one person will not work for another. So learning how to fit to your body, or if you're making for other people, fit to a whole range of different bodies is key. So things that have really helped me are these two books here, and we'll start with this one. So this is the complete photo guide to perfect fitting. So this one's really good because it shows you a lot of really uh, clear pictures of the problems that you can get with fitting something and then the solution, how to fix it, how to fix it on the person, how to fix it on the pattern. So this is like a really, really good book if you find like, for instance, you make a pair of trousers, but you always get like this bagging in the crutch, even though you are cutting the size that is perfect for you it will show you how to do it. Or if you've got like a really small waist, but you've got quite wide hips, this is the book for you. Or if you're the other way around, if you've got really straight, narrow hips, but you're actually kind of round in the middle, this book is for you. You've got big boobs, small boobs, you've got a hump on your back, you've got like inverted shoulders, you've got wonky shoulders, this book is for you because this will show you how to fit the clothing so that it fits your body and it always looks good because when you wear something that's ill-fitting, then it brings attention to the things that you might be trying to hide or just it just brings attention to the non-symmetry of your body. And none of us are symmetrical. Like I have wonky shoulders and I've also got like sloping shoulders. So things that need you to be like this, I, I, just, I just can't. I have to work with things that go down here. So I have to make adjustments on the shoulders. Um, it's the same, like, it's the same with my chest. I've got one boob that is slightly bigger than the other. So when I'm making things that are quite close fitting, I find that one side is a bit like this, and then the other side is not. So I have to make those adjustments. So this will show you how to do that. Maybe not everything that I've just said, but it will definitely get you in the right direction. And the pictures are really, really good. It also shows you how to measure yourself and just like a little bit of history about measuring and basically how to alter your garments that you already have so that they fit you better. So this really highly recommend. And another one that I would also highly recommend, which is kind of like this one. Now, I'm not sure how to say this other person's surname. So I'm just gonna say Pletch, Pletch, Pletch. Is a Palmer Pletch, I don't know if that's the right way, but it's the complete guide to fitting. This one is also a really, really good book showing you how to fit um, paper patterns. Um, they also talk about tissue fitting, which is something that I've been doing for a little while, especially when you have like the patterns that are on the tissue paper. When I've cut the pattern in the size that I need, I will actually pin it together within the seam um, with pins, the tissue, and then I'll try it on. I'll try it on the tissue. So if it's like a jacket, I'll pin the whole thing together like a jacket. I'll put my arm in it very carefully and then I can actually see if it hits that center line. Does it hit that back line? I only do one half. And that is the first step before doing a twirl, like doing it out of a practice fabric. So this will show you how to do all of that. It will also show you once you've tissue fit, how to get rid of like the wrinkles, how to change shoulders and basically everything that you have in this book, also in this book, but I think this one is a little bit more detailed and it also shows you on a range of different bodies. Um, I would definitely recommend these for beginners as well. If you're using these as a beginner, uh, you will have to get your head around using a pattern first. So using a pattern and then learning how to make sure that pattern fits you, they go hand in hand. But I think for a lot of people that sew, they will learn how to sew, they will use patterns, and they'll go through a little while of just having things not fit quite as well until they get this. So if you are looking for like a reference to how to make sure things fit perfectly first time, 
these are the ones. And again, I will link these below. The next thing we're going to talk about is my overlocker. So the next thing we're going to talk about is working with your overlocker. Now I have two books which I haven't actually read a lot but I've just started reading a lot about them now because oh my gosh my overlocker has been giving me some real trouble and I realized that actually I don't really know how to use it past like the basic just like cut and sew my fabric like I don't really know what else to do so I bought this book here which is the beginner's guide to overlockers serges and cover lockers so if you have a serger you have an overlocker although they're kind of the same and you have a cover locker which is not the same then this is a really good book so not only does this show you how to like thread them what their uses are for and the different things you can do with them there are also projects in here that you can like do with just your serger cover locker or whatever. So the reason why I got this book is because I wanted to know how to use my overlocker, but I also wanted to be able to just like do full projects on there. This has 15 different projects that I can go with, with all the patterns that are in the back. So they have the full size patterns at the back of the book. And there's also um, extra information online that you can follow along with. So this one, I haven't gone through it yet, but I know that I need to because I have so much trouble with my overlocker, which brings me on to the next book because I needed one just for my overlocker, just so I could know all the different things I could do with it. And apparently there's a lot of stuff you can do with it, apart from like the one thing that I use it for. So this is the overlocker technique manual. Now this book has a lot of like ways you can do edging. So it talks about all the different stitches you you can do talks about uh, problems that you might get how to fix those problems like tension and why you would use a different stitch for whatever project so it's actually pretty good the reason why I bought this book is because the overlocker that they're using is the one that I actually have um, my one's the upgraded version but it is a Janome one the Janome overlockers are kind of all the same apart from the really really upgraded one so I have one of the standard ones so I thought that because they use this as an example I know that I'll be able to do that exact same thing with my overlocker so if you're looking for like an overlocker manual and you happen to find one that uses your overlocker as the instruction thing get that one because then you know that everything that they're doing you can do on your one so <laughs> that's why i got this one and there is a lot of information in here i've actually used a few things on here but um mostly for like seams and stuff but there are finishes that you can do and there's lots of different ways you can hem that i also like need to learn because like at the moment i just use like the same stitch for everything and I know there's some other beautiful stitches that you can do but I have yet to learn them so these two I haven't used as much yet but I would still recommend them because if you're going to buy a whole machine then you should definitely learn how to use it and all the different ways you can and the sooner that you do that the more enjoyable that machine will become for you and the more use you're going to get out of it I already use mine a lot but I know that as soon as I learn how to do all the other stitches I'm sure I will use it a whole lot more so these two are like future reading and co future slash current reading so those are my overlocker books and i'm sure there are a lot more um but at, until i kind of master the basics of my machine i don't feel the need to like buy any more So this last section is about fabric and I only actually have one book that I use all the time and this is this book, The Fabric for Fashion Swatch Book. This book has helped me identify all the fabrics that are in this room and I have a lot and sometimes you buy a fabric because you like the pattern on it but not because of what kind of fabric it is. A lot of fabric I have there is because I liked the way that it looked or I liked the way that it felt, but I didn't necessarily know what kind of fabric I was buying. So when I do bring it home, I will flip through my book here until I find the same fabric and then I know how to take care of it. I know how to sew it. I know whether I should iron it or not. It's a really useful reference guide to have. I hope they have an updated version because there are newer fabrics that are out there that aren't in here yet. So in this book, as you will see, um, they have like different sections and they will show you all of this like fabric and it will be stuck like this. There'll be a little description of what it is. And then on here, you're on the other page, it will show you the composition of that fabric, what its uses are for, where you might find it, and like what you can use it for basically. And uh, yeah, really, really helpful. There's a little bit about everything. It talks about synthetic fibers. It goes and talks about knits. There's like silks in here, and you've got like all, all the different 
fabrics are in here. Not every single one in the world, but the majority of them are in here. So if you're looking to know what the difference between cotton duck and cotton lawn is, when I'm buying fabric online and it says cotton something, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. I will have a look in here and it will show me and then I can feel it and I can, you know, stretch it a bit and be like, oh, okay, I know what I would make out of this. So really, really helpful book. I picked this one up when I went into college. This is about eight years ago uh, when I've had this and I've been using it ever since. When I need to identify a fabric, straight in here. If I need to like write a description of a fabric, go in the book and I can kind of like narrow down a type of fabric which will allow me then to go and shop for one so really really good book especially if you're just learning about fabrics um, that is a great way to be able to feel and touch and like smell them and like you can even burn the corners so you know what to look for when you're in a fabric store and it will really help you when sourcing and looking for fabrics for your projects so that is it guys these are all of my sewing books that are scattered around me now on the floor and and uh, these are the ones that I use the most often. These are the ones that have helped me grow as a sewist, helped me elevate my sewing and helped my skills get better. Um, and these are the ones that I would definitely recommend. I'm sure there are a lot of other books out there. And there are books that I'm like, I've got a Amazon wish list full of books that I have um, that I've not bought. But the ones that I do have and these ones are greatly helping and I think they'll continue to help especially that pattern cutting book the giant one and the dressmaking book with all the techniques in it because I still go back to that one like on a weekly basis so as I've been saying throughout the whole video I will put all the links for everything that I've shown you down below so you guys can go have a look add to your Amazon list do a little bit of shopping and that is it guys so thank you for watching to the end of the video if you enjoyed this video then hit that thumbs up button let me know what you think in the comments do you have any of these books are there any other books you would recommend like how are you doing your learning about sewing and if you haven't already then subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can know when i post another video whenever that will be and i'll see you guys in the next video